In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Amana ASZ V9 and the Daikin DZ9. We're going to be comparing efficiency ratings. We're going to be talking about their differences, and we'll also be talking about their similarities, and they might be more similar than you think, but we're going to do a deep dive into the efficiency ratings. We'll also talk about the Energy Star ratings and what qualifies for which rebates in your particular area. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing for the algorithm if you haven't done so already. It's a huge help and it takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this so if you find value from this content liking and subscribing is a free way you can show support and it's much appreciated so that being said let's dive in and kind of do a broad overview of this system and I know I'm going to get a little bit of hate for this comment but one of the things that I've been caught saying on this channel many times before is that you know brand doesn't matter or the truth about brand is that it really comes down to the installation more than the brand. The truth is, is that brand does matter, but a lot of the brands have some similarity. So when we're doing this head-to-head -head matchup, the reason I'm doing Amana and Daikin is because what you'll find out very quickly is that these are actually extremely similar. They're actually almost identical. There's going to be a few changes in some of the technology in terms of the thermostats and things that they use and how these communicating systems work, but they're basically identical in terms of how they perform. And although this is true for Amana and Daikin, this is also true because this is the Daikin DZ9VC. And when you look at it compared to the Amana, as you can see, they look relatively similar. You know, in this picture, it has a four blade versus three blade. And so there's some minor differences, right? And we're just looking at the pictures of these particular systems. When you look at other brands like Carrier, Carrier is actually the same as Bryant as well as Payne. And some people didn't, might not have known that, but they're just different product lines within the manufacturers. And that's just how manufacturers kind of make the equipment, just like how Train is also manufacturing American at standard. And it's not uncommon common for them to have multiple levels of equipment as well as a like a budget or a builder's grade brand in their product line as well. So that being said, I just wanted to start with that and let's dive into some of the data and look at these particular systems. Now, this is an inverter driven heat pump. If you're considering an inverter, if you're not familiar with how inverters work, the reason these systems are so efficient is that they ramp up and down along a continuum instead of coming on at 100% capacity and then off at 100% capacity, which is how a single stage or a two stage system system works in that a two-stage system is a little better in that it comes on at half capacity or 50% give or take and then ramps up to 100% after a staging period. But or true inverters like these systems, they actually ramp up and down in small intervals of less than 1% based on both the call for cooling or heating as well as the temperature differential in the home. And basically as a result, they run at maybe 50% or 30% capacity or 70% capacity and they almost rarely or never run at 100% capacity because they're always trying to satisfy that set temperature and then they're smart enough to know that once they're at you know 95 capacity if they sense that the thermostat inside is coming down at an effective rate they'll op maximize their efficiency and basically ramp back down and so they might you know be two degrees away from the set point but no hey we're gonna hit the temperature so we'll back off to 70% capacity and as a result you get a lot more comfortable home in general because number one it's quite Quieter. And number two, it's circulating air longer. And so you actually get more even temperature distribution throughout your home. So anyone who is considering an inverter, if you can afford it, they're definitely going to be more comfortable. And if you have a large bill, they're actually worth it because they are going to save you money on your bill each month. When you look at this SEER rating of 22.5 on the SEER 2 rating, that's a reflection of how well something performs in the cooling months. So in the peak of summer, if you live in a really hot climate, this is definitely having a, a more efficient system is going to save you some money. But these systems are basically, if you look at these two items, they're basically identical. And I'll show you what I mean when I pull up the Energy Star data. Now, we are going to dive into the COP data, and I'm going to do a head-to-head -head matchup between this, the ASV9 and the Daikin DZ9. And you will see that, again, they're basically identical. You can see that when we pull up the Energy Star data on this ASZV9, you know, cooling capacity qualifications are basically identical, right? 23.2 to 45,000 BTUs. Um, so when I say these systems are similar or identical, that's literally what I mean. So they're very similar. And the EER2 rating, the SEER2 rating, and the HSPF2 rating are all basically neck and neck. So what's going to be the difference and why should you choose a MANA versus Daikin? Well, that's where warranty comes in. And so we're going to talk about that in a second. But since we're on the page where we have these tax credits pulled up and some of this tax credit eligibility, what I want to show you is how you can navigate this for yourself. Because one of 
of the things that I like about this is that the uh, tax credit eligibility here, you can see it explains what qualifies in the north and what qualifies, you know, in the southern states. Now, this particular system qualifies in the southern states, and it's not going to qualify as a cold climate heat pump. If you do want a cold climate heat pump, you should consider the side discharge version, like the Daikin Fit or the Samana ASZS6, which we talk about in another video. Let's dive into the performance data to kind of show you what we're talking about in terms of how these systems actually perform from a heating perspective. Because when I start to show you the heating performance, you'll start to see why these systems don't qualify for that cold climate heat pump. And in order to qualify for that heat pump, there's basically two requirements. The first is that these systems have to maintain a certain capacity at ambient temperature that is uh, at five degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason they have to maintain certain capacity in that capacity 70% is because that way this, they know the system is not derating and basically becoming obsolete or not able to keep up when it's really cold outside. And what I have pulled up here is the two ton system on the DZ9, as well as the two ton system on the AS. ZV9, which is the Amana version. And as you can see, the cooling data or the heating data at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, it's 23.2. The COP is 3.53. It's identical on the Daikin Fit. And then when you look at this system at five degrees Fahrenheit, you can see the COP is 2.2, which is actually very efficient. And I'll explain what COP means in a second. The problem is, is it's derating substantially. So this system, although it's putting out 23,000 BTUs of heat at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, at five degrees Fahrenheit, that's cut by about 40 to 45% capacity. And that's why the system doesn't qualify as a cold climate heat pump. Now, if you look at the three ton version, it's a little bit better, right? Where it drops from 34,000 BTUs to 24,000 BTUs. So it's maybe about a 30% drop in the efficiency but it's still some not quite enough to qualify for that cold climate heat pump tax credit. Now, like I said, as you can see, these systems are basically identical. I think I've kind of made my point in terms of looking at the performance data and how they keep up. What are some of the other differences between these systems? Well, if you look at the Amana product, one thing you'll notice is it says it has a 10 year parts limited warranty and it has a lifetime unit replacement warranty. Now that lifetime unit replacement warranty is limited to the original purchaser. So that doesn't transfer when you sell your home. A lifetime guarantee is pretty nice. Um, that means if the compressor goes bad, they'll replace the entire unit for you. So on these higher end systems, they do come with a much better warranty because they want you to know that compressor outside is going to last. It's built to last and they stand behind it. And if it doesn't, they'll guarantee it for 10 years if, if it does transfer ownership. But if you're in the house and you bought this system and you made that investment, you're the one who purchased it and if the compressor goes out 20 years from now, they'll give you a brand new condenser when that compressor goes bad. That's one of the benefits of an Amana system. Daikin does have a little bit better parts warranty. So they have a 12 year parts warranty and a 12 year unit replacement guarantee. So I'll pull that up just so you can see 12 year parts and 12 year unit replacement guarantee that does transfer with the purchaser. So if this is something where you want a high end high efficiency system and you want a warranty that transfers if you're planning on selling the home. Uh, truth be told, if I was if you're going to sell the home in like two, three years, this is just a comfort upgrade for you because you're not going to recoup the savings that quickly, but you will have a better system. So that part is nice. But that being said, most people that are buying this system are planning on staying in the home for several years to recoup those costs and some of those savings. But that 12 year parts warranty, it is transferable. And so that's one of the benefits. And they also offer that same unit replacement guarantee to where if your compressor goes bad in those 12 years, they'll give you a brand new unit, not just a brand new compressor. And there's one more thing I'll talk about briefly on the Energy Star ratings. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you've gotten value out of this content. It takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and your support is much appreciated. So diving back in here, when you select tax credit eligibility, one of the things that is a nifty little tool is you can come down here and you can click explore models and it's going to take you to a new page where you can type in any particular model. So let's say we type in the DZ9. You can see that it pulled up, you know, uh, this particular system, the DZ9, this is the, you know, two ton, the three ton, and the four ton models all qualify when they're paired with certain indoor matchups. So depending on the furnace that they are paired with and the air handler and coil they're paired with will determine whether or not they qualify for that tax credit eligibility. And as you can see, it'll tell you whether or not they qualify in the north, which they don't, or in the south, uh, which they do. And so this is, uh, you know, just a great tool. I realize this is kind of nerdy. It seems super time consuming. It is, don't get me wrong. We It's time consuming for us. 
and we know what we're doing and how to navigate this. The bottom line is your contractor uh, will know how to look up this information, right? So if you're like, I don't have time to research all the models, don't worry, you don't have to do that. You don't have to look for the matchup. That responsibility rests on uh, your contractor and making sure you have an AHRI matchup because what that matchup is that I just showed you is that was a tested configuration of this specific model. So even though this particular condenser qualifies, it doesn't qualify with any indoor unit. It qualifies with a select set of indoor units that have been tested and guaranteed to keep up and maintain maximum efficiency. So again, your contractor should be able to navigate that. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And hopefully you found this content helpful and if you did, right now there's a few more videos popping up on the screen that YouTube thinks you should watch as well as a few other videos about heat pumps and efficiency ratings. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode.